Hey, this is Monique. One more project. This time, I'm going to shorten the sleeves on a suit coat. It's really not as hard as you might think. I think the first thing you should do if you're going to try this is get out your camera. Take pictures as you work so that if you have a question later, you can go back and see things. Now you have to start by deconstruction. Measuring things as you go is good so that you can tell how far they were. First thing you want to do is release the, the lining from the sleeve. Deconstruct that so that they can get in there and work. You'll see that the lining is folded over and then sewn up at the top. That allows it to move around better on the shirt sleeve and not bunch up the suit coat sleeve either. So work all that out and be sure to get rid of all of those little threads as you go so that your finished product looks as good as possible. Now you're going to cut off the length of the lining. Now this is the amount that you want to shorten the sleeve. If you want to shorten it a quarter inch, you cut off a quarter inch. If you want to shorten it an inch, you cut off an inch. Cut that off of the lining and then begin the deconstruction part of the outer layer of the suit coat sleeve itself. Take pictures as you go. They'll be very helpful later. The suit coat is a two piece sleeve. So one side of it, the seam just goes all the way down to the bottom, but the other side of it is where the overlap is, where the buttons will be on the finished jacket. So leave the one seam that's sewn all the way down, don't take that out, but then you're gonna to need to take apart the uh, side where it overlaps. Measure what they have as the original links so that you can get it back to the same look when you're finished and take out that one side that goes just straight down. That one won't be any problem. It'll be easy to do. The other side is a mitered corner, which is a little bit trickier, but we'll see that here in just a minute after we deconstruct first. Once you get all of that done, go ahead and press this out a little flat, but maybe not completely flat because the fold marks from where they had it before can be useful as a reference, but you want to get it flat enough. You can work with it. Be sure and not turn your iron up too high because it's hard to use a pressing cloth when you're ironing these small weird spaces. Now add some interfacing so that it will still be in the right place once you cut off some of the bottom so that the bottom edge of the fold of the hem has interfacing that goes above it. I ironed out this little bit of a fold that was in the sleeve of the lining and then I could fold it again and iron it and pin it. It was just too hard to work with that first little fold that was left from the old hem. The lining is also a two-piece sleeve, so you'll have two different seams to work with. When you fold them up, you can be sure that you're folding straight and then measure those. And it's so small, you can stretch your fingers between them and iron those so that they'll stay out of your way. Then you can pull the rest of the sleeve back out and work with it. And we'll get back to the lining after we finish this. Be sure and measure very carefully because once you've cut it, that's it. You're not going to go backwards from there. So measure across carefully and cut one layer at a time. It looks like I cut both and I did cut both until I got to the seam. But once I was past the seam, I cut one layer at a time. And this is the amount of change. It doesn't have to do with what the hem length is going to be. It's the amount of change. Finally, we get to start putting this thing back together. Measure up so that your hem is the same length as it was before. Remember those pictures? Remember that measuring you did? I hope you did that. Fold it back up and this is this side is easy. It's just a little narrow seam allowance. It's on the side there, a little backstitch at the bottom. Not a problem for this side. Once you get that done, you can go ahead and turn that out and uh, make sure you look like the way that one looks. And then we'll do the mitered one, which is a little bit more challenging. So you're going to measure up on where the fold line was because this side has the overlap. So that's a really deep seam allowance there. Measure up. I measured up on the outside because I could see that fold line. It was hard to see it through the interfacing, but then I had to transfer my pin to the inside because I'm going to fold it right sides together. So I couldn't be able to see the pin and the pin would be in the way. So once I get that marked fold diagonally, now this is that the bottom edge and the side that goes up to make the overlap. So I'm folding them diagonally so that they're together and so that they intersect with where the pin was that I just put in. Now put it on the machine with the machine stitch is going to be perpendicular to that fold. Stitch across and then when you open that back out, you should have the mitered corner of the overlap. There we go. 
Now I have chopsticks that I use to make those corners come out good. If you use a bamboo skewer, sometimes it's too sharp and it stabs all the way through. So some chopsticks is what I prefer. Now I'm gonna put this hem back in. So I wanna measure and make sure it's right. You can see your old hem there if you didn't iron it out too hard. And that is a double check to make sure that you changed it the amount you want to. So then I double checked that it was straight around, that the overlap lined up even, that one of them wasn't longer than the other. And now I'm gonna change the length of the overlap opening. See that extra above where the old stitch was? I wanna move my stitch up the same distance that I changed for the hem, so that the opening where the buttons are goes up the same distance. It's not really an opening, it's kind of an overlap, but I still want it to be the same distance as it should be and not something shorter. And now I'll take out the old stitch that was there so that it releases it and it shows the right length. And then I'm going to turn it back right sides out and double check again before I sew the lining down to it. And look, it actually was the same length there. That was really good. Now this time I'm going to turn the heat up as much as I think I can, but still not all the way up because I, until I can use a pressing cloth, I don't want to hurt the fabric by burning it with a hot iron. But there, that looked really good. Now I'm gonna go back in and tack everything in place because if I don't, that is not gonna be able to stay well. And the, on the seam that's on the underarm side, you wanna make sure and sew a little bit there. You could do it by hand, you can do a zigzag, just do something so that the seam allowance is attached there on that underarm side of the seam. And that'll help hold all of that up. Now to get the lining, the last thing, get the lining. I wanna measure it and make sure I have it at the right place and pin it in place. But then it's gonna be weird because I've gotta repin it in order to be able to sew it. Because remember, it folds back up and you wanna sew at the top edge of it. So this I did by hand, look at that. A little bitty bit, put the whole right on top of it. Look at my hands, I need some lotion. Anyway, now we're gonna stitch that in place. First I put the pins up too high so that they held it from sliding up and down but kept the bottom edge where I needed it and then go around with just a quick easy stitch because this is never going to show. I promise you no one else is ever going to look at this unless you challenge them to look at it. Okay move out those pins turn it right side out and there now. Now look how good Kyle looks. Stop right now pray for Kyle. He is a police officer and we want him to be safe. Thanks for watching. I hope you saw that it really isn't that hard to change the length on the suit coat sleeves. Two things, pray for Kyle, and remember, put on the full armor of God that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. See you next time.